Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's meeting. Before we start the meeting, we'll ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. To effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the 15th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Berg? Excuse? Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunas? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Rehassel? Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. Next we have a Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Ryan, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Approval of the minutes, Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we um, approve the previous minutes of the Common Council and that the same be entered into the record. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first one is a letter from Gerald L. Yachman, uh, dated October 18th to the mayor, advising that uh, due to his family schedule and current workload, he's resigning from the Board of Examiners for Building Contractors. All in favor? Move to accept and file. Second. Motion second to accept and file. <clears throat> Any discussion on the resignation? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. The second resignation I am going to ask Mr. Tom Holton to please come to the podium and read it to us. Mr. Holton. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mayor, Common Council, Department Heads, fellow co-workers. As of uh, 5 p.m. December 13th, 2006, I'll be resigning my position as Director of Public Works and Engineering. I'd like to thank every and each one of you for the opportunity to work with you and making the city a great place to live, work, and play. It also has been an honor to serve the citizens of this great community. Thank you. Thank you. To accept and file. Second. Motion and second to accept and file resignation. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> One opposition. Monte Mayor. Mayor's appointments, we have none. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Nancy Mudre to be considered for appointment to the Library Board to fill the unexpired term of David Gallianetti, whose term expires 4-30-08. Signed by the Mayor. That's for motion to confirm. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment <clears throat> is confirmed. Next, we have proclamation uh, Sheboygan Area Youth Symphony 25th anniversary. Is Kim Miller? Yes. Please come forward. This is one of the greatest things a mayor gets to do is proclaim nice days like these. We have a proclamation, and I'd like to read it. Whereas the Sheboygan Area Youth Symphony is dedicated to enri enriching the arts in the Sheboygan County by providing classical and contemporary 
orchestral music, and whereas the Sheboygan Area Youth Symphony is comprised of 60 young musicians in grades 6 through 12 from 16 different schools and 13 communities from around Sheboygan County, including homeschool musicians who all love music and join together to perform three concerts of quality orchestral music showcasing the outstanding talents of the musical youth of Sheboygan County, and whereas the Sheboygan Area Youth Symphony is committed to music education and enhancing the development of music in our schools by providing a full orchestra experience for our members, which allows string and wind students to perform together as one ensemble, when often the full orchestra experience and its vast amount of repertoire is unavailable for them within their own school music program. And whereas the Sheboygan Area Youth Symphony proudly presents, represents Sheboygan and Sheboygan County and Wisconsin as they perform concerts nationwide to appreciative audiences and outstanding reviews on concert tours. And whereas the Sheboygan Area Youth Symphony is a nonprofit voluntary organization proudly supported in the community by the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra and the Sheboygan Area School District, as well as by concert ticket sales, fundraising efforts, and contributions by generous citizens, good businesses, and caring foundation grants. Now, therefore, I, Juan Perez, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby extend congratulations to the Sheboygan Area Youth Symphony in recognition of the 25th anniversary and urge all citizens to join me in attending the special concerts which have been scheduled during the, this season, which commemorates the silver anniversary of the Sheboygan Area Youth Symphony. Congratulations. Next, we have public forum, Madam City Clerk. Yes, first on the list would be Jeff Shuko. <clears throat> and Jeff, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, my address is 2303 South 17th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, Council Members and Citizens, I'm here today to talk about our efforts to acquire funding for problem bird removal and provide everyone with a end of the year assessment of our situation here in Sheboygan. First, I would like to thank our mayor, Susan Hart and attorney McLean for their assistance in gathering information necessary for a grant and for a proper pledge form. Although pledges I distributed to area businesses failed to raise funding needed to match state funds for a grant for Sheboygan, this had to be carried out on very short notice because of the grant application deadline. And I would like to also point out that a lot of area businesses have contributed considerable funding towards keeping their rooftops and properties clear of the birds. Uh, because of the potential health risk to citizens, especially children, I felt the information I have gathered for the grant should be turned over to my alderman or any other alderman willing to address this issue on the council floor. Uh, and I passed out uh, a brief three-page summary of some of the activities that I've documented through now the month of October and into November. Uh, those three photos, briefly, are covering the algae blooms which are continuing to flourish surprisingly along our lakefront. Uh, and this has uh, been determined by myself to be from excessive gull droppings. Uh, page two is seen in a number of parks uh, in go coming into the winter months now. We're continuing to have mi migratory birds all over our athletic fields, which isn't good, especially for the football players, because the droppings get into the clothing, which then gets taken into their homes, and it's a very unhealthy situation. Uh, Page three, the city storm sewer holding ponds are attracting migratory birds in great numbers, which also adds to the E. coli bacterial runoff. So what I had talked to uh, the mayor's office about doing already, and Susan Hart's husband, who is a biology teacher, they're interested in taking a look into uh, the grant information that I have uh, accumulated. And if my aldermen are interested, I have copies of that. I would, love, I would be more than happy to provide for your information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Next on the list is Ernest Kepler. Mr. 
Mr. Kepler, can you give me your home address, please? 2533 Lakeshore Drive. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. One of Mayor Juan Perez's campaign promises was open government and citizen input. From my viewpoint, this has been working well in a progressive sort of way since he took office. He has demonstrated an open door policy, is accessible by phone. If not, he has returned my phone calls within hours. Most important is that various city committee meetings I have attended, citizen input and participation was welcomed and encouraged, fully supporting one of our dearest heritage as Americans, freedom of speech. However, just one week ago this very day, on Monday, October 30th, this all changed at the City Finance Committee meeting. The key subject on the agenda was resolution number 80607 concerning the city's stormwater fee. I, both as an individual and as a member of the Schwann County Taxpayers Alliance, have been strongly advocating the abolishment of this very unpopular and unnecessary fee since its inception. Abolishment of the stormwater fee was one of Mayor Juan Perez's key campaign pledges. I gave this pledge my highest priority as to the reason why I support him for election to the office of mayor of the city of Sheboygan. I was hoping that the same intensity would be given to the abolishment of the stormwater fee as was given to save Sharon and Park concerning its selection for the site of the supposed forthcoming new police station. To date, this has not been the case. However, I am not here tonight to roast his honor on this issue. Instead, I'm here to relate my total anger, disgust, and hurt of not being able to give my citizen input at last Monday's Finance Committee meeting. At the outset, it was stated by Committee Chairman and older person James Graff that only committee members would be allowed to speak. There were at least five citizens, all of whom wished to address the committee, but none were allowed. This is in direct conflict of Mayor Perez's edict and certainly against that of what has become common practice at committee meetings including the Finance Committee meeting. I felt that my constitutional right of freedom of speech was violated. On the other hand, Mayor Perez, who is not a member of the Finance Committee, was also present, yet he was not only allowed to speak, his input was sought after by the committee chairman. Why didn't the mayor or any other committee member ask the chairman to allow the attending citizens to talk? The good news is the committee voted unanimously to abolish the stormwater fee. The bad news is that they are recommending a five-year phase-out period. The mayor stated he agreed with the committee. Is this really going to transpire, or will it carry on and on, such as has the abolishment of the wheel tax? At any rate, if this council follows the recommendation of the Finance Committee, the stormwater fee will not totally disappear until the end of 2011, three years after the current mayoral term of office. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Ed Wachowski. And Mr. Wachowski, can we have your home address, please? 2632 North A Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I am re representing the Sheboygan Taxpayers Alliance. I would not be speaking tonight if we were afforded the courtesy and respect to speak at last week's Finance Committee meeting. But that was not the case since it was announced at the beginning of the meeting by the Chairman that only the committee members would be allowed to discuss the issues raised by the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance regarding the stormwater fee. The last time we checked, the Mayor, Mr. Beeble, and Mr. Holton were not members of the committee, so why were they permitted to speak at the meeting and we were not? This issue was held at a previous finance committee, committee meeting, so we could address the committee. What happened? The Public Works Committee moved at an earlier date to file our concerns, as stated in a four-page report submitted to them, without discussion. One member of that committee admitted to us that she had not read the report, but she voted for it to file it anyway. And now for the stormwater fee itself. The stormwater fee is a $1.5 million increase in the public works budget and has not been used to address the concerns that were presented to you by the public works management. Public works management stated the fee was needed to meet new state and federal mandates. That simply is not true. How do we know? Because that fact is outlined in the reports that were submitted to the state by the public, relations, by the public works department. 
Public Works Management stated the stormwater fee was needed to address flooding problems in Sheboygan. That is also not true. How do we know? Again, because it is stated in the same reports that Sheboygan does not have flooding problems. These reports were filed by the Public, Rela Public Works Department with the state. Have you read the submitted reports to the state, the SLAM report, the SWPP, and other reports? They're about that thick. You probably didn't even know they existed. Well, we have read them. The E. coli problem in the lake is not being addressed by the stormwater fee. They know what causes the problem, and it is not being corrected. We have, told, we, are, we, are, we have been told by the Public Relations Department we'll have to lay off employees if the stormwater fee is abolished. We support firing the new employees hired and paid for by the stormwater fee, but they simply can't do that. Why? Because they didn't hire anybody. They shifted the cost for employees already on the payroll and part of management salaries to the stormwater account and did not reduce the budget by the amount of the fee. Management, please tell the council that this statement is absolutely not true. The Public Works Department will tell you they do not have enough money in their budget to do the things that they are required to do. Not true. Because recently, they gave three employees substantial raises, and when asked where will the money for these raises come from, the answer was we have enough money in our budget when asked why, in the stormwater account, did they spend $53,000 in overtime when they only budgeted $10,000, are you ready for the answer? Because it no way affected the, the bottom line or total salaries budgeted amount. Simply stated, they had more money than they needed, so they could afford one and a half times the hourly rate just to get rid of the extra money. The Public Works Management did not even know that their books were incorrect until we told them. When you see those shiny new trucks running around the city, $175,000 of the stormwater fee helped to pay for them, and the department wants to take $200,000 out of the stormwater fee in 2007 for more new trucks. The report submitted to the Finance and Public Works Committees by the Sheboygan Taxpayers Alliance document it clearly, the mismanagement of the stormwater fee by the Department of Public Works. It has been stated that this fee need, is needed to get the not-for-profits to pay towards city services they use. Are you telling me you want us to pay $1.5 million fee so you can collect $40,000 from the churches and other not-for-profits? This amount doesn't even cover the cost of the $77,000 that the Water Department charges to build a fee. And now regarding double dipping taxation. The school district, the county, the city pay the stormwater fee with tax dollars they collect from us. And who pays a second time to replace that money in their budgets? You guessed it, the taxpayers. In conclusion, tonight, the mayor and several older persons have the opportunity to keep their campaign promise. Excuse me, Mr. Kowalski. Would May you I have like the extra your additional minute? minute? Sure, certainly. Complete their uh, campaign promise to, um, to abolish the unjust stormwater fee. Alder Person Chucha has introduced a re resolution that, des that deserves your support <laughs> toward this goal. We, taxpayers, thank her for honoring what she said she would do and doing it. I would also like to thank Alderman Alder Persons Hannah and Byrne for keeping an open mind and evaluating the facts and coming to the proper conclusion. Do you really want to abolish it over five years and pay $385,000 in billing fees, which is more than the $300,000 you will collect in the final year? For all these reasons and, and others that I have not been able to state tonight because of limited time, I ask you to act responsibility and vote to abolish the stormwater fee in a timely fashion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Tom Tuzinski. Mr. Tuzinski, could you give me your home address, please? Certainly. <clears throat> 2404 Silver Leaf Lane. And you will have five minutes, sir. Mayor Perez, Attorney McLean, 
Clerk Richards and members of the council. Thanks for this opportunity to speak to you and importantly members of the public that might be listening this evening. I'm speaking as a taxpayer this evening, although you'll recognize me as a traffic sergeant with the police department. My concern tonight is with moving maintenance of our fleet to the municipal service building. This matter was discussed in most detail at the building use committee. At that, commi at that committee, members of the department and the public gave their input to a committee made up of some members of the council, but also members of the public. One of those members is Joe Clark, an architect. Another, Carl Rigotti, was a previous member of the county board, serving on building committees for the county and also volunteered in similar fashion with the school district. Mayor Perez, these are good choices for this committee. The building use committee listened to the information. Alderman Groff, the committee chair, thanked everyone and was going to move on. However, Mr. Rigotti and Cameron Stewart, the police representative to their credit, <clears throat> rightfully asked the chair what the committee was put in place for if they were not recommending to the council information they received and the building use committee then forwarded it in an RC 240-0607 to the committee of the whole, four items with a favorable recommendation. <clears throat> Two standing committees, public protection and safety and public works, had in their respective committees RC 118-0607, which was a communication from, from Alder Person Meyer to move maintenance to the, of the police feet Please flee to Department of Public Works. This communication was also forwarded to the Committee of the Whole with a favorable recommendation. Those committees did not have the same high profile meeting that Building Use did in the Roca Room at the library. Committee of the Whole took up that communication first and passed it, passed it on. There was some input from the Chief, however, again, no one asked our Fleet Maintenance, maintenance Supervisor for his input. Your Committee of the Whole then took the communication from Building Use, carved out one of the recommendations, that building use passed and eliminated keeping maintenance and eliminated keeping maintenance with the new police facility. Perhaps this is allowed, however, I ask whether a chair of a committee can amend a communication that the committee voted on in total. Again, I'm speaking of RC 240-0607. Perhaps if this issue comes up tonight, the city attorney could be asked whether a committee of the whole can disregard or change a recommendation from a lesser committee or should they have just voted up or down on the document? As to the need or problems I see is a loss of efficiency of operation, both for our department and the mechanic himself. Right now, Mr. Daniels keeps an accurate record of each vehicle and timeline when the vehicle needs maintenance. But more than that, because of his efficiency, the city has been able to go three years with our squads instead of two. I previously presented several minor problems resolved by our mechanics and have three more this past week. <clears throat> I needed to go on the road to investigate an issue for an upcoming Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting. The squad had a dead battery. Mr. Daniels came out, jump-started it, discovered a defective battery, which he was labor later able to get a replacement for, and I was on my way. The very next day, the squad had a burned-out headlamp, which Mr. Nye, Daniels' assistant, changed in less than 10 minutes, and I was on the road. This past Friday, one of our squads was hit, and an officer was injured. There was some question as to whether the other vehicles... A brake system was defective, and Mr. Daniels' examination on the scene found a defective braking system. Daniels is directly involved in the bid process for new squads. Again, he keeps records on all our vehicles. He, does, he just doesn't turn a wrench. This week, he will be opening and going through cars that they have set for auction on Saturday. I know one of our aldermen spoke to a previous member of our department who retired. I think he retired over 10 years ago. That person told that alderman that we could do without the maintenance. However, that officer was here when the squads were turned over every two years, and the responsibilities of the maintenance operations expanded due to other cutbacks. That officer never supervised the garage operation. As to supervision and record keeping, what police supervisor is now going to be in charge of record keeping for our fleet? One item not brought about in reports that some aldermen are bringing forward as to agencies that have maintenance elsewhere is that in those agencies, a police supervisor is responsible for record keeping. Our department has done without new vehicles. When, we need, when the need came to replace our dive van and emergency response van, with interaction of our staff, we located used vehicles, and Mr. Daniels and his staff retrofitted them to our needs, saving the city thousands of dollars. <clears throat> Another example of increased duties, Mr. Daniels' assistant travels with the property officer to the crime lab in Milwaukee. Previously, we've had two property officers. We cut back to save money. 
Uh, so now he goes along, and uh, trust me, you don't want to be in the neighborhood they go to. Excuse when me, they... Tom, would you like your additional minutes? Yes, please. Okay. You don't want to go into the neighborhood where they go to to drop off that evidence. Fire department maintenance is on 25th Street. Transit does their own maintenance. Why? Perhaps because the vehicles are specialized. The police vehicles are specialized also. The base car that the city buys is roughly sixteen to seventeen thousand dollars with a trade-in. It will be less this year because we've kept them for three. But after that equipment's transferred, the vehicle is now worth thirty grand. As a taxpayer, I'd rather spend the money on the initial building, keeping the maintenance with us, approximately two thousand square feet, roughly nine thousand dollars for a lift, than be shuttling vehicles back and forth. Uh, this past week, we saw the opening of both high schools expansion project this past weekend. What struck me when talking to the two principals was the input that they had as to where their buildings were going to be and what changes that were, they were allowed to make with their architects to build a project for not just today, but for the future. Mr. Rigotti at this past, past <clears throat> week's building use committee again asked what the committee was there for. Excuse me, you, Tom, your time is right. up, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. And last on the list would be Barb Kaczynski. Barb, can I have your home address, please? 2404 Silver Leaf Lane. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. I've held off on coming here speaking out of deference to both the police department and in all honesty to my spouse. Uh, I feel very strongly that we need as a community to pull forward and build for the future and do what is right for this community, which at this point is building a new police station. But up until this point, I've been telling people on a regular basis, and people are agreeing with me, this common council under the leadership we currently have, has no intention of building a police station. People would say, why would you say that? I say that because I have no evidence pointing to any positive action taking place to build this any time in the near future. As I told people, you have no plan, you have possibly no architect, you have no land. How can you build a police station with none of those things intact? It takes approximately up to nine months from the time you have the idea to the time you can break ground in order to get that in place. I've spoke to a number of architects and people familiar with this process. So where does that leave me? Rather frustrated. However, we have tonight on our agenda the possibility to finally bring this to fruition. I do have to wonder, and people have asked me, why has this taken so long? I can tell you people, I'm not going to dwell on it, but I will give you some past history. The past history goes back to looking at emails that I have gotten through open records requests via um, a number of Common Council members' emails. Back in September of 05, the email went forth to the vast majority of our Common Council members, will you be willing to move the police station to 2008 and the City Hall remodeling to 2010 if the fire station will be built this year? That was one of the first emails. The next email that came out a few months later in February of 06 was, if we're going to share services of the county, now is the time to look at this, including joint dispatch, turning the detective division over to the sheriff, moving the maintenance division to the municipal service building, and also limiting the salvage port. This was again reiterated later on in the year in June of 2006. That email was from Mr. Groff to the rest of Alderman. I feel that unfortunately what has been occurring previously was a lot of behind scenes negotiations, a lot of behind the scenes discussions. When I was at that building use committee meeting recently that Mr. Tushinsky referred to, Mr. Rigotti was quite angry. He said, why are we meeting? Why are we not discussing this? Mr. Boren, a member of this common council, wanted to discuss an issue. Um, I was very appreciative of the fact I was allowed to speak that evening. I will tell you, item number six on the building use committee was, quote unquote, discussion and recommendation on the police facility. We were informed, and Mr. Bourne was informed, we are not discussing the police facility at this meeting. Now, being somebody who's known for going along open meetings law, open records law, I said, I raised my hand, I said, I don't know why it would be improper to discuss the police facility when it's posted this way. The meeting adjourned. I was then informed by Ms. Montemayor that we will be breaking ground in January of 2007 for a police station. There may be a plan of doing some type of ceremonial putting of a spade into solid frozen dirt at that point, 
but I cannot see it happening with the timeline we have in place. We consistently heard over and over, we had to move forward with a timeline. Van der Vaart couldn't get in the way. We have to move forward with the timeline. I am asking this Common Council now to move forward in a positive direction. You have the leadership, you have the potential. You have among you a mayor and an alderman who successfully brought to fruition a wonderful project in this community for the school district and for this community. You have business people. You have people, older people have gone out and done their homework. I congratulate you for the amount of work you do, but now it's time to turn it to the experts. One of the reasons we were so successful with our building here at North and South and Jefferson School was relying on our experts. You are paying Mr. Sabinesh and Zimmerman Design Group an awful lot of money for their expertise. Please rely on them. Rely on your building use committee. Take the information you have and move forward in a positive direction. It is possible, talking to an architect, you could actually break ground within about three months from start to when you actually want to get started. However, this is going to be long hours and a lot of cooperation with a number of people. It can be done. I please implore this Common Council to not put this on the back burner anymore, to move forward. So I no longer am saying to people, I have seen nothing to date that shows me that they are going to be building this any time in the near future. You have a possibility here to put that all behind us, start with a clean slate, work together as a community, have the experts that you have out there, the people in the building use committee, these aldermen, not to micromanage, but to work with the experts, your police officers, your architects, your contractors, and move forward. You have two choices. You can either do that and do that well, and that can be your legacy. You can look out and say, this is what we've done for posterity. Excuse me, Barb, would you like your extra minute? Thank you. Or you have another choice of another legacy of creating something like Plaza 8, where we look back and say, why didn't we do this properly? We had a chance. I please implore this police, <laughs> police department, I apologize. I implore this common council, show people I'm wrong. Please, I'd love to be wrong. I'd love to have somebody hold me up as a piece of ridicule, saying, my gosh, was she wrong when she said they're not going to be building this. All I have is the data in front of me. Please show me I'm wrong. Work together. Work with the community. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. We're going to go next to the mayor's comments, and I have several comments that I'd like to make, but as has been the practice when there are comments made during the public forum that merit some type of response, uh, we have usually done that, and I have done it. Previous mayors have done it, and I intend to do it today. In response to the issue of the committee, uh, Chairman Groff uh, of the Finance Committee not allowing the public to speak, it needs to be understood that we, some of us, may not like that, but it is the call of the chair. That is the duty and responsibility of the chair. I do not want to second guess the call of the chair. This is not my committee meeting. It's his or her committee meeting. And it's important to understand that during the committee meetings, business has to be conducted. And if people want to address the council, perfect place is what we just saw today, a full, full page. To say that we are denying anybody's freedom of speech is not correct. Are we denying every 50,000 people in the city of Sheboygan the freedom of speech when we allow only five to speak? No, we're not. We're trying to conduct business. Alderman Groff should not be ridiculed for making a decision not to allow public input. He's not, he doesn't do it in every meeting, but he did it that time. Whatever his reason was, I respect that. I think we should respect that. At some point, some of you are going to be chairman or chairwoman of a committee, you will have the same call to make. And whatever call you make, I will stand behind you. I may not agree with it, but that is your call to make, as I have calls to make here. The other issue that was addressed today is that this police station is not going to get built. If I have to go nail the thing together myself, I will. It's going to get built next year. I think that we're through talking. I think it's time to build. We put a, a plan in place to work with our architect. They will materialize the finished product pretty quick. 
Some people are not privy to that type of discussion, to that type of information. And the problem with what people don't know is that they tend to make up stuff, okay? And that's okay, but they shouldn't go spreading it like it's truth. What's happening now is very critical. It's coming at a very critical time. This police station, folks, Alderman, going to get built. I guarantee you that. And I think all of you feel that firm about building that police station myself. That's why I feel so confident about it. Just wanted to clarify that. As I go out in the community and meet people, people talk to me about a lot of things. In fact, a good friend of mine who watches the meetings all the time, Mr. John Dietz from Meadowview Manor, talked to me just recently. I visited and had lunch with him, and uh, we talked about the budget, and that's a discussion that uh, we have tonight. The next council meeting on the, will be a council meeting and also an opportunity for public input on the budget. The 27th is when we approve the budget. And that meeting, please make notation, is at 515 on the 27th. Not at 7, not at 6, 515. I am changing the time at the request of an alderman for good reason. 515 is very accommodating, should be accommodating to everyone, and that is the next step would be the public hearing opportunity for the public to speak during the next council meeting, and then we have the approval of the budget on the 27th. The process has worked itself through the department heads, the mayor's executive review, to the committees, and that's where we're at now. We, we're still at the 0% increase in the levy. I hope that you will help me honor your resolution, which I abided by, to have a 0% increase, we've had to bite the bullet. Wasn't an easy thing to do, but we got it done. Next year, I don't know that we can do it. I don't know that we can continue to have 0% increase in a levy when every other political entity continues to have increases in theirs. I think we have a duty to the taxpayers to provide the services and to make those adjustments in the costs <coughs> as they come forth every single year. It's just the way it's going to be. I ask for the public support. I ask for the city uh, uh, common council support to understand that because of raising, rising costs and our, our revenues just not being able to keep up with our expenditures, we'll probably have to start looking at some sort of increase somewhere. In, which leads me to the next point. In that somewhere, we're also going to be looking at, as was mentioned today, the stormwater. The stormwater is being recommended to phase out in five years with 20% increments each year. I am hoping, I am hoping that you will consider phasing it out in two, strongly consider phasing it out in two. For one primary reason, not because I made a promise or I ran a campaign based on that. If I were not to keep my word, I expect to pay the price for that. And I'm, I'm, I'm man enough to do that. But I think that people should be a little weary, a little leery, I should say, of is this council serious about phasing out the stormwater <laughs> fee if they're gonna do it in five? A lot of things can happen in five years. Very few things can happen in two. I'm asking you to strongly consider amending this resolution, substitute resolution coming in tonight, to phase it out in five, to phase it out in two. <clears throat> I think it's critical that the public maintain their trust in us and the work that we do. What is that? I, I think it's critical that we maintain that, that trust. If anybody has any cell phones, please turn them off too. We ask that uh, it's critical that the public maintain their trust in what we say we're going to do. And the stormwater fee is a very sensitive issue. It has support for, for phasing out from a lot of people in this community, and I'm asking you to consider that. That's going to be, be a, a difficult thing from a financial standpoint, but we're going we're gonna to dig into our finances and find substitute revenue for it and perhaps a revenue enhancer within the next two years. I feel confident that we can do it, and I wouldn't be making this request if I didn't. The 
The next item is the city development. Just wanted to, to invite you to move about the community and take a look, take a personal look at some of the development that's going on. Take a look at South Pier, how we put all the sidewalks together, how the promenade is going to be extended, how the lights are going up on the, on the west side of the river, the new lights to match the lights on the east side, to go by the Highland restaurant that's coming up, see the plaza is being built between the capsule building and the Highland restaurant, to see the uh, Morning Star condominium project, to see the, the, uh, the, the old green warehouse condominium project, to see Taylor Drive. All these things are really, really awesome things. A lot of good things are happening. It's so easy to get distracted and focus on what's not positive. But I invite you to just walk around, just drive around and see some of these things that are happening in Sheboygan that are making our community much, much better for our residents. As you know, the Walmart will be open uh, Wednesday. They have a grand opening at 7 o'clock. I don't like to wake up at 7 o'clock and go to those kind of meetings, but I will be there. You're invited to go there yourself. I would like to extend a personal thanks and a thanks from the aldermen for the donations that they made. These donations were handed out on Sunday, and they go as follows to the city for park improvements, uh, playground equipment, I should say. They gave $7,000. For the library for literacy uh, programs, they gave $5,000. For the police department, uh, certain areas in the police department, they gave $900. And for the fire department, they gave $600. And they did that just because they wanted to, to work with the city. And I think uh, that it's a very great gesture of them, and I thank them for that. Also keep in mind that the bus routes took effect today, the new bus routes. So if you have a problem with connecting with the bus, call Ron McDonald. He'll be glad to talk to you. And, f <laughs> and finally, I have the... Uh, on the agenda, efficiency and cost savings initiative. As you, you will recall, in several council, at least two or three council meetings and several uh, salary and grievance meetings, we've talked about looking at our organizational structure, our table of organization. Our table of organization reflects good times. That thing was put together when times were good. Well, times are not good anymore. Bad times are here. We have to make the adjustments in the table of organization to reflect our financial capability, what we're able to afford. The uh, Salary and Grievance Committee has been looking and talking with various department heads and looking at options. I have been looking at options. Uh, Alderman Susha, as chairman of, of, of the Salary and Grievance, and I will get together and we will put together a plan that will create some changes, but should result in efficiency and some cost savings. And basically, the way I like to des describe it is we're going to reshuffle the deck. Instead of getting four aces, you may get a, a different hand, but it's going to be for the better. We need to do that because we have no other source of revenue. We need to look at how is it that we're spending our tax dollars. Where are we putting our tax dollars? Are we putting enough there or not enough? Are we putting too much there and we shouldn't be? Those are questions we need to be looking at and those are uh, questions that Alderman Susha has looked at. And I think we'll come up with a, with a pretty good plan that I think uh, will, will please everyone. Well, maybe not everyone, but it's going to please a lot of people. Okay, so be expecting that. And I think that does it. Thank you very much. The next item we are going into will be public hearings. We have three. The first one is to establish the use of the use district classification of annex property located between South Business Drive and Manning Drive, Manning Road. The second one is to change the use district classification of various properties located between South Business Drive and Manning Road. And the third is to establish the use district classification of annex property located south of Main Avenue and west of North 29th Street as Class SR 5 Suburban Residential 5 classification. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council with respect to the three public hearings? 
Is there anyone that would like to address the council? <coughs> Alderman Cerda? Thank you, Your Honor. Then I move that we close the floor. Thank you. Motion and second to close the floor and hearings. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda, Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and file all ROs um, and accept and adopt all the RCs and put upon the passage all resolutions and general ordinances. Motion and second. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of officers 2, 1532 through 1542 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 1543 by Alderman Groff, authorizing the filing of an application with the U.S. Department of Transportation and authorizing the executing of contract pertaining to grants for calendar year 207. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd also like to take 1545, which is a, um, which is a, um, a resolution um, authorizing the transit directed to apply for the city um, county non motorized transportation pilot program funding for bike racks and for administration of, of the project if funded. I would move that both those resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. Motion and second to put 1543, 1540, 40, 1545 upon their passage. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1544 by Alderman Manny to co sponsor a Sheboygan Community Forum on Universal Health Care. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to suspend the rules. We don't need to do that. Do we, do we need to suspend the rules? Um, oh, wait a minute. I don't think we do. We don't need to suspend the rules. Just need a motion. I don't think we would. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I move then, Your Honor, that we put the resolution upon its passage. Motion and second to put 1544 upon its passage under discussion. <coughs> there being none, please call the roll. Groff? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1546 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Clayunas, Susha, and Boren, authorizing a transfer of appropriation in the 06 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would ask for suspension of the rules on that deck. There's a motion and second. Is there any objection? There being none, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and I'm hoping everybody has a copy of the revised document or the corrected copy. I would move then that that resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, I'd like to amend it. Um, the item, let's say one, two, three, fourth item, establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for the Hispanic Fair sponsored by the Mayor's Office. I would move to change the amount from $670 to $860. Is there a second to that? Second. Motion and a second to amend the 670 to 860 under discussion. Under discussion, that's the amount that was collected um, um, or well we need to um, to pay out to the various uh, people that participated in in the um, Hispanic Fair. Thank you and under discussion I extend a, a thank you to all the entities that participated. On the amendment changing 8670 to 860 any more discussion? There being none all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. On the. Your Honor, um, as amended, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put upon its passage. 1546 is amended under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. 
Boren. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. And Graf. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1547 through 1549 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 1550, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7242 based on his failure to cooperate with the committee, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his habitual law breaking. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to refer this back to committee. Second. Motion and second to refer back to committee under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1551 and 1552 lies over till November 27th. Page 8. 1553 to be referred. Report of Committee 7. 1554 by law and licensing recommending granting an extension to the Sheboygan House on their deadline for commencing their business under his alcohol beverage license for six months. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt under discussion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, you've made comments before about the development around the city and things. This is a development that's happening just a half a block from here in the corner of Aiton Center. Uh, a couple that are working at remodeling and revising the old Executive A and Grand Hotel remodel or whatever. You happened to call it, and they came back to your committee and asked us for a little bit more time to work with it. But this is just another fine example of how this community is coming together and putting together wonderful developments that are going to help us go into the future. Wonderful. Thank you, Alderman Retke. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Is it the Sheboygan House or Sheboygan Hotel? I think it's Sheboygan Hotel, isn't it? Yeah. Good point, Alderman Clayunas. Please make that notation. We don't need a motion for that. Just make the notation. Thank you. Yes. I'll turn I, know, I know the facility is called the Sheboygan Hotel, but uh -huh. I don't know. It could be that the corporate entity is Sheboygan oh, okay. House, Inc. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. Right. okay. Go back. Leave it as is. All right. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out, Alderman Cleunas. Any more discussion on that? Alderman Ratke. Yes, Your Honor, it is the Sheboygan House Incorporated, so okay. that is correct. So it's going under the uh, incorporation. Okay, anything else? Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1555 by Public Works, but Public Protection and Safety regarding issues surrounding, surrounding the enforcement of Sheboygan's Comprehensive Clearwater Certification Program and recommending that the Building Inspection Department and the City Attorney's Office be given the authority to exercise reasonable discretion in enforcing the ordinance. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move to put the RC or that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt 1555 under discussion. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just think that this is an excellent example of the city uh, responding to a rational request from citizens. Uh, <coughs> this is a, a, a well-meaning ordinance, uh, but there's some very impractical applications of it, and this gives our department a chance to respond <coughs> on a case-by-case -case basis, so I think it's terrific. That's a very good point, Alderman Hanna. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clyunas? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1556 by the Committee of the Whole recommending filing document submitting the Police Department building and City Hall space list summaries from Zimmerman Design Group. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? 
Kittleson. Aye. Cleonis. Aye. And Manny. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. How much? I'm s- no, one voted no. No. No? Mm-hmm. Sorry, no. Alderman Vanderbilt voted? <coughs> oh, you voted. Aye. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, 1557, by the Committee of the Whole recommending, accepting, and adopting the document from Building Use Committee making various recommendations except recommending filing the first bullet point on the list of recommendations which reads... Keep the mechanics with the police department when the police department moves to the 23rd location. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, I would just like to ask the city attorney if, if I handled that correctly in the committee of the whole by, by uh, taking that one item out from a, a report of committee. Um. The way I would read it is uh, the recommendation from the Building Use Committee to the Committee of the Whole included various items. The Committee of the Whole looked at it and uh, agreed with most of them, but not with all of them. And uh, I don't think it's a matter of you can't tie the Committee of the Whole's hands to uh, accepting the whole package or not. I think they've got the discretion to pick and choose and come to the council with the best recommendation that they feel is appropriate, so I don't have a problem with it. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, Vice President Sarda? Thank you, Your Honor. That satisfied my question. Thank you. No one else? Please call the roll. Alderman Manny? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just want to double check here. Um, <clears throat> So the motion is to file at this point, correct? Mm-hmm. Accept and adopt the report of committee Here we are, adopt. Okay. from the Committee of the Whole with all the recommendations from, from building use to Committee of the Whole except the one that reads for the, with the mechanics, okay? Okay, I understand the, uh, the motion then clearly. Um, I'm in favor of maintaining the mechanics with the new play station site. I just wanted to verbalize that before the vote. So. I would be voting against this resolution if that's my perspective. Correct? Yes. And I encourage others to think along that line as well. Um, my thinking basically is along the line of efficiency. And my biggest source of information and conviction is based upon my <coughs> conversation with a friend and the county mechanic for all the sheriff's vehicles. And his clear perspective is that if he were elsewhere from the squad cars in a different location, it would distinctly impact his efficiency and the quality of his work, and it would waste all sorts of time. And I think that same issue is a reality for us in the decision that we're making. So I'm completely committed to maintaining the mechanics at the site with the new police station. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with Alderman Manny on this issue. I, too, will be voting against this. Uh, we have not had any examples of, uh, brought before us of why it makes any sense to not include the mechanic uh, with the new police department uh, at the new police department. We have not, nobody has, has, has proven to me that we're going to be any more efficient, we're going to be less efficient. It's really not a cost savings. We're building the building. Uh, we have to put a lift in either location. Uh, there's some security issues with the municipal building as opposed to the police department. So I wholeheartedly agree with Alderman Manny, and I too am going to vote against this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. I have thought about this one long and hard. Uh, and I, I looked to see if I felt I believed moving the mechanic to a central location was going to be the best thing for the city. I too am going to vote against this. Um, I don't see the savings uh, dollar-wise to the city uh, being worth the give up in efficiencies. Um, I've read the reports, I've talked to various police officers, and at this point I'm going to vote. <coughs> Alderman Davis. Honorable Mayor, our building use committee came forward with these recommendations here. I also uh, I'm going to vote no on this here, just for the first bullet. I mean, this is our recommendation. It should stay with this uh, recommendation and be voted on as a whole, unless you want to separate the 
the recommendations on a line by line basis here. But to keep the integrity and security of the squads and the police department, I'll be voting low on this. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Rehassel. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I was told a few months ago by another police officer in another part of the state when discussing a number of issues on our police station construction that on the subject of maintenance that it was simply not the norm in his experience that the mechanic would be on site. He himself had just built the station a few years earlier, took the opportunity to tour a number of stations across the state, so he had pretty good experience about this. Um, but me being the skeptic, I set out to find my own answer. And a lot of you have seen the reports I've written after having gone to or visited or interviewed a total of eight different police chiefs or deputy chiefs across the state of Wisconsin. Um, and I can tell you that the majority of them, six out of eight, either used their DPW, Department of Public Works, exclusively or partially. Um, most all of them lose it, use it exclusively. So um, I guess if I look at it, even if I, I can use that information and and make a decision based on that. But if I back up and throw everything out the window and just say, what if we went to a new site, a new city, and said, we need to build a city. Would we, if we were building a city, would we build five different shops like we have currently, five different maintenance shops? And I would think most people would say no. A number of constituents I've talked to have agreed they wouldn't do that. So I don't know if, if we agree with it in that stance why we would go against it any other way, I guess. I think we need to strive towards efficiency. And in my mind, um, I guess I would feel a little irresponsible using taxpayer money to continue this duplication. If we can pare it down from five shops currently to four, um, I think that's the best interest of the taxpayer. I can certainly empathize with the police force because it's change, and change is always a pain in the butt. Um, there's different personnel, there's different processes and everything else. So I can empathize with that, but I just cannot continue the duplication from a taxpayer standpoint. There is going to be extra cost no matter how you cut it. Um, I know there's going to be some downplaying, but there's going to be some extra cost. There's no denying that. And I just don't want to be a part of that. So I'll vote for it. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, actually, I did ask that question that Alderman Verhassel just ended with. I did send a list of questions to uh, Mr. Sabinash a couple months ago. And one of the questions I asked him was, how much is it going to cost to put the mechanic on 23rd Street? And his response was approximately $100,000. So to say that we're not going to save any money, that's simply not true. We're going to save close to $100,000. Uh, we need to be fiscally responsible. You have to keep in mind that the police officers go to the municipal service building every single day in their squad car to get their gas. Somebody recently questioned me if we're going to put a gas pump at the new police station if we put the mechanic there. And I said, no, I don't think so, because who would want to put another gas tank um, right next to a brand new police station. It just didn't make much sense. So since the police officers are already going down to the municipal service building every day to get gas, if they have a problem with their car, they simply would drop it off at that time, switch their gear into another squad car that isn't being used, and they would continue with their daily activity. I don't see how this would be any more inconvenient uh, for the police officers since they're already going to that building. I think that um, I, I do feel bad for the mechanics at the municipal service building, the implications are being made that they are not certified or they're not good enough to work on squad cars. And I think we have a very capable crew down there. And there's also been implications made in the past that they are thieves because they may steal the tools utilized by the police mechanic. I think this is insulting and I think it's wrong that um, we're trying to prevent an, a shared service from within the city. I mean, we, we talk about shared services outside this community, and we need to do more of that within the city. This is a simple, easy process. I'm not sure why we're rehashing it on the council floor again, because we went through all this in the committee of the whole. And with that said, I'll be calling the question. Second. Motion and second to call the question. We have to seize discussion. We'll take a vote. We'll have a roll call. Pardon me? This is a closed discussion? Yes. Boren? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? No. I'm sorry. This is to close all discussion. An I vote would be, would be to close discussion. No. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Meyer? 
Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. No. 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 Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Verhassel. Nine eyes, six nos. Nine eyes? Nine eyes, six motion, nos. Motion carries. Re uh, it requires a two-thirds vote. It requires oh, a two-thirds two vote. Two okay, so there's no motion. Continue. Alderman Ryan, your second time, sir. Thank you once again, Your Honor. Um, try to make this brief. First of all, asking Mr. Sabernash, and uh, no offense against Alder Person Susha here, she does do a fine job. Asking him what it would cost arbitrarily to put a, a, a service bay in the new police department, $100,000, um, I don't think is, can we compare that to what is it going to cost to move the service bay to the municipal building? Municipal building, we are going to have to put up, from what I understand, a concrete wall. We are going to have to add a lift. Uh, it's been insinuated that I may not trust so an alder person, uh, or I may be that alder person, that said that uh, I may have insinuated that the uh, people at Public Works will steal the mechanic's tools. I have said in the past that the mechanic in the police department, Mr. Daniels, does use his own tools, and that if he decided not to move his own tools down to Public Works, being a larger area, that the city would then be buying tools for the police mechanic rather than him using his own tools. There was no insinuation of people stealing tools or any insinuation upon my part of Mr. Uh, of, of Mr. Daniels or myself not trusting the other people at DPW. Um, it just does not make any sense at this point. There are no efficiencies. I look at, at Alderman Verhasselt's work here, which he has put a lot of work into this. Um, this is on our desk tonight from the Eau Claire Police Station notes that uh, um, basically what happens now is the officers administration staff help shuttle officers back from DPW and the DPW staff help shuttle repaired car back to the station later in the day. So what you're doing is you're taking another person and tying them up basically uh, acting as the shuttle driver back and forth on both ends of it. Uh, this is not efficient. In the long run, this is not going to save money. This is not going to save us any money. Uh, it's to, to, to say that the DPW workers are present, uh, uh, people at the municipal building, are underqualified to work on police vehicles has never been, set, has never been insinuated. They are plenty qualified. They have, there, there are many expert mechanics that are certified just as our own police mechanic is. Uh, this is not a slam on DPW. This is not saying that DPW is not qualified to work on the police cars. This is saying that it is more efficient for the police department to keep the police maintenance with the police vehicles at the police department. We've heard many examples of it. And I, I think as, as, a, as a council, um, we would be uh, basically not doing the public any justice by building a police department that is going to be less efficient than what we have right now. Thank you again. Thank you. <coughs> Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and I could, be, I could stand to be corrected, but if I understood Alderperson Susha, um, what she had explained is that um, talking about if the municipal employees could, this, the mechanics, provide that service to our um, police department fleet. I don't believe that's the question here, and that would raise a big concern of mine if, indeed, that's something we're looking at down the future. Um, because I, my understanding is that we're still looking to utilize our, our police department mechanic to service those vehicles at the municipal building. So again, I stand to be corrected. I'd be very concerned if we were thinking about eliminating his position. Um, secondly, um, when I took this position as older persons, I made a point to visit um, the majority of our departments. And I can specifically remember when I toured that facility down on New Jersey mm -hmm. Avenue, they were maxed out at space then. Um, and to justify that, that's why we had to tear down the incinerator so we could utilize that space in providing um, shelter for the salt down there. So I'm not convinced at this time that we actually have the space down there needed to perform the service. And lastly, although I can respect seeking outside opinions outside the city of Sheboygan, I don't think it should take precedence in undermining what our department suggestions are. And as a result of all of those things that I mentioned, I'll be voting no. Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, um, uh, just to reiterate what has been said also, I went just last week down to the Municipal Service Building myself and uh, took a, to, wanted to see exactly where that area was. Uh, Dave Beeble and several supervisors uh, took me and showed me the area there. And at this point in time, we'd have to do some major renovations down there also. And to say what the cost would be, uh, we don't know that at this time. So if we're saying $100,000 on 23rd Street, we don't know how, what it's going to cost to do the renovations down there at the Municipal Service Garage either. So with that being said, and, and the room down there uh, also, they are maxed out for space. And not that they're not even willing to work along with us because, because I got the a strong impression that they are. They are willing to share and to work at what, to make work whatever needs to be made workable. But I think at this point, building a new facility and keeping our mechanic with the police station is the best, uh, uh, best thing to do at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Manny, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm gonna change direction and look at another bullet point. So perhaps we'll open up another whole door of conversation. I hope so, because I want more information. Uh, I'm not convinced about the need for an exercise space in the police station, so I would like input to help me believe that that's essential. Uh, I see some probable or possible reasons why that might be necessary or desirable, especially with uh, shifts going all day long and, and, uh, and thus work schedules being, being distinctive and different for folks. But we have two wonderful new facilities at the North and South High Schools. I would see a great advantage in seeing our officers mixing it up with citizens, both young and old. And I think that would be a great PR piece in the community and that would build relationships that would be helpful for public protection and safety and thus our common good. So I'd like to hear the weaknesses in my perspective. Why do we need that space, the cost that goes with it, when Officers are not mandated by uh, contract for any sort of workout time frame. Uh, it's on their own time, it's off work hours. The facilities at the high schools are much more attractive than anything they would possibly have in a new facility. Why aren't those the better places for them to be? Help. Thank you, Alderman Manny. The several of them have spoken twice already. I won't let you speak again unless the council wants it to. Otherwise, we're going to, you have rehashed this thing several times and went to the committee of the whole. You're bringing it back. You're hearing the same thing. I think everybody knows how everybody feels. It, it's just going to go on and on. All of them board. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, getting back to the uh, maintenance again, I was happy to hear the sergeant say tonight in the public forum that the mechanic has a maintenance plan for all of the vehicles. Uh, I think one of the advantages moving it down to public works is that we're going to have 52 weeks a year coverage. I believe the mechanic currently must go on vacation sometime during the year. That would be one advantage of having uh, coverage 52 weeks a year. Also, if I have anything to say about it, when we build a new police department, I want to have a garage that's built big enough to house the majority of the police vehicles. Depending on who I talk to, we either have 14 or 17 marked vehicles. Uh, as, I, as I envision it, if it's down at Public Works, with the maintenance schedule that the mechanic has, he may have three or four vehicles down there at one time, which would leave 10 squads at our new garage at the new police department for use for the officers. So if somebody did have a dead battery or a flat tire, there would be enough vehicles in the new garage on site at the new police station. The only vehicles that would be down there on New Jersey Avenue would be the actual vehicles that are being worked on for that day or for that week. And also it might even be possible to do some cross training in his downtime to work on some of the other vehicles if he's a certified, if he's a certified mechanic. Uh, we also have to look at trends and I think trends is a very important wor uh, word for what uh, Alderman Verhassel has done in his research and the trend around the state of Wisconsin is that most police departments are using their public works department for maintenance and most of them have been doing it for many, many years and they report basically no problems with it at all. I also toured along with Alderman, uh, Alderperson Clayunas after I became Alderman. I toured the uh, public works facility down on New Jersey Avenue and Mr. Beeble uh, told 
uh, Alder Person Clayunas and I that there is work, there is room down there for them to do the maintenance. There's an area where there's some uh, I don't know how you would describe it, kind of a storage area that may have to be relocated. But according to Mr. Beeble, there is indeed room down there to do the maintenance. So I'm going to I'm going to vote to support uh, moving the maintenance down to Public Works. Thank you. Oh, Renan, have you gone twice? I think this is my second time. This is your second time. Oh, second. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple things, and I, I will address uh, Alderman Manning's concerns about a workout area for them. I, there is no way that the police department should even attempt to compete with the school district in terms of the cardiovascular facilities now available from 5.30 in the morning until 10 in the evening at both South and North High. Uh, I would suggest that the equipment that the police department now has could be cost effectively stored in a modest workout area in a new butler type garage uh, area as an offset. And I think it just, it lends itself to some convenience because of shifts. And not all the, not all the officers can fit that, that north and south high workout schedule in. That would be my only comment there. Uh, secondly, I would question that um, our architect would use a uh, $100,000 cost number on a 2,000 square, or on a 200 square foot uh, uh, mechanics area. Now that we've gone with a butler construction, that cost figure would be considerably lower, like closer to $10,000 for a 200 square foot area. And then you throw a lift in at 9,000. So we're talking about $20,000, not $109,000. Thank you. Alderman Thank you. Alderman Hassel, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to do a lay, I guess, any concerns that have been brought up on two issues. One is security down at DPW and the other about the shuttling back and forth. I did ask those questions quite pointedly to the DPW directors, fleet managers, and chief of police as I did my research, did my study, and I can tell you that none of them pointed out any security issues. Um, specifically, in most, instance, most instances, the police cars, the squad cars were returned back to the police station prior to close of the day. In the instance that the vehicles had to be held over for some larger work, they were simply brought into the building and all the doors were locked and secured, as probably would be the case anyways. Um, as far as the shuttling back and forth, I specifically prodded and kind of picked at him as well, you know, come on, tell me how bad it is, tell me the hassle of it. And I asked a number of different sergeants, chiefs, deputy chiefs that I talked to, and they all really treated it as second nature. It was no big deal. As you can see in the information, it ranges from four to 33 years that these different police stations have been doing this. And they really were very, very comfortable with it. If there were any concerns, I would have noted it. My, the point of my report is not to sway the council in any one direction. It was just to lay it out there as I asked the questions. I listed both good and bad information. Uh, I should say information on both sides of the argument, I should say. <laughs> um, as far as you know, the amount of space down there, I guess maybe my background is skewing this, but to me, we have 15 hours worth of space in that building. It only operates about nine hours a day right now. So to say we don't have space, is true when you just look at the eight, nine hour day, but we have 15 hours worth a day. I'm not, I guess, comfortable with saying that we need to stick within that nine hour time frame. A lot of our maintenance is scheduled, is pre-scheduled, so we should be able to try to move that around a little bit later, earlier in the day, to allow for preferential treatment to the squad cars so they can get in and get out in a timely fashion. Um, the thing I do like about bringing them down to the maintenance shop, bringing Mr. Daniels down, I don't know if he's here, but. He gains access to a lot more expertise around him. I think that's always valuable. And it probably gains access to more tools and equipment as well, which should make his job easier in the end. So thank you. Alderman Meyer. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Um, most of my points have just been made. Um, I agree with Alderperson Verhasselt, Alderperson Boren, um, Alderperson Shusha with their recommendations to put the mechanic down <coughs> at EPW. I think it'll be a lot more efficient system. There, like um, Alderman Verhasselt just stated, there are more mechanics down there. Um, if there are problems, I think we have a, a bigger pool to pick from. I don't understand why having the mechanic at this location would cause so much trouble. We have, I believe, 17 squad cars, five on the road at any given shift. So I don't understand why this would be such a hard thing to schedule. Um, you know, and, and as far as the um, workout area, I agree with Alderman Manny. I think our new um, additions to North and South would be 
the way to go, and um, I would support that also. So thank you. Vice President Serta, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I won't go over everything else that was mentioned. Just one last thing to think about um, to address Alderperson Manny's question is my short time on salary and grievance. It was mentioned, I know specifically with the fire department, some of the cost saving incentives um, due to health care costs um, with physical fitness. And I'm sure that same um, contingency is probably also applied to the police department. Alderman Manuel. Thank you, Your Honor. I respect every alderman that spoke tonight, and I especially appreciate the alderman that brought up new points and, uh, and went to the municipal building and, and researched there and, and had more questions. But I'm also frustrated because the reason we have community of the whole meetings is so that we don't sit here and talk for 45 minutes an hour about one subject. A lot of it we already talked about. So I just want to express my frustration that we either talk about it here or talk about it in community of the whole. If we want to talk about it here for an hour, let's do that. But let's not talk about it two different times. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Ratkin. Thank you, Your Honor. Since we're dealing with uh, this report from the Committee of the Whole, I was just wondering if we could take 1571 and 1572 with it, because those two documents are directly related to this very discussion, so we're not rehashing this the second time around. Thank you. I'm sorry, what did you just say? 1571 and 1572. Take it with it. I'd like to make a motion to take those with it if I could. I'm mean, not the chairman of the committee. Why don't we just, who made the motion? Alderman Vanderbilt, you made the motion. Would you include those two documents in your, in your motion? Thank you, Your Honor. I think it would be appropriate to vote separately on 1557, and then we'll take the, the other two. Do, do you still want to make the motion? I don't think you accept support. Okay. Okay. Um, you spoke twice. Whoever spoke twice, I'm not. I'm not going to hit your button anymore. Alderman Bourne, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> this time, I want to discuss the uh, health club for the officers. I originally was. I was originally against a uh, a gym for the for the officers, but after giving it, giving it some thought and with the possibility of building it in the uh, in the new garage, uh, I'm going to support that. I think it's something that builds camaraderie with the officers. Uh, it allows them uh, to work out at when, when, the, when it's convenient for them. And uh, they originally were asking for 1,000 square feet. I don't know if I can ex uh, it can su support a 1,000 square foot garage. Uh, most of the ones that I've, that I've looked at in my research are anywhere from 500 up to 750 square feet. In my document uh, 1537 that's going to building use tonight, I'm recommending, I believe without having it in front of me, about a 650 square foot uh, workout room for the officers adjacent to their locker rooms. I think it's convenient for them. I think it's the least we can do for the officers. And again, I think it's going to uh, build camaraderie amongst the officers. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to get ready. Chief, you had asked to speak. Is there anything different from last time, or are we going to rehash the same thing? Something different? Please come up. I won't ask to speak twice, only once. I wish to uh, say thank you uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, for the direction and the dedication to the timeline of the construction of this police department. There were some people who spoke on this issue, and, and you once again said we are sticking with this, this timeline, and I thank you for that. As far as the, uh, the trends and what's unique to the city of Sheboygan versus other police departments, why do we have 16 aldermen? I mean, other cities have a different number of aldermen. Why do we have 16? We're, we're unique. This is what works for the city. Perhaps we need eight aldermen. Perhaps we need 32 aldermen. It's just what's, what's our city is different than other cities. And to say that the trend is to go to public works, that could very well be. Um, it does take place in other cities. But people speak of change, and change is good. Well, change is good if it means it's more efficient. And if you create inefficiency by change, why are we changing just to say we, we, that we change something here? As far as vehicle transfer, it will reduce the officer's time on the road, and it will create some downtime. 
As far as vehicles on the road and do they gas every shift? No, they do not gas every shift. Sometimes they're tied up. We could range between five vehicles to 10 vehicles to 12 vehicles. So it depends on the day and it depends on the staff and the number of vehicles we have on the road. As far as Tom Holton and Dave Beeble, please, I wish, and, and your people at Public Works, we never intended to, to imply that we didn't trust your people, that it was not the issue. And the issue of security, I apologize to your people. If, if you thought that we indicate that we don't trust your people, that's, that's not the case, please. I wish to say that. As far as coverage in the garage, we have two people, one mechanic and one laborer. When the mechanic is off on vacation, our laborer takes over as the mechanic. He is qualified to do that work. <clears throat> as, excuse me. As far as a health club, this is not a health club. I, I used to belong to a health club, and a health club has shower facilities, has a steam, has sauna. This is a fitness room, and the equipment in this room is the officer's equipment. It's not provided by the city. All we're asking for is to give us an open room that we can put some items in. Would I wish or would I like to go to North and South High School to work out? You're absolutely right. However, all we're asking is there's different times our officers work out. Just give us a room, a vacant room. We will supply the equipment that goes in that room. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before I call the roll, this is a very this is a very good example of how several people can be looking at the same thing and everybody takes a different interpretation of it. I'm convinced that there is efficiency and cost savings in it. I'm convinced. I'm also convinced it's a time something can become political instead of fiscal. Use your good judgment when you vote. Please call the roll. Okay. Should we explain? Does everybody know what we're voting on? This is to accept and adopt the RC as it stands right now. A motion, uh, a vote yes will move the maintenance to municipal building. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Serta. No. Davis. No. Graf. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion carries. 1558 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7244 based on his record of violations related to the license activity and his habitual violation of the law. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion. Is Taylor Martin here this evening? He is not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you. Please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? And Montemayor, aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1559 through 1569 lies over to November 27th council meeting. 1570 to be referred. Report of committees eight, 1571 by the committee of the whole recommending directing that the maintenance of all police department vehicles to the municipal building, uh, municipal service building. Alderman Vanderwill, would you take 71 and 72 please? Thank you. Accepting a doubt. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Honor. I'll uh, move to put to have uh, the RC is accepted and adopted. Okay. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. Please call the roll. And this is for both documents, Alderman Vanderbilt. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Serta. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion carries. Reported committee is 1573 by Public Protection and Safety recommended amendment general ordinance number 119 
changing the speed, speed limit on South Taylor Drive from Washington Avenue South County EE from 45 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour and passing the attached substitute ordinance. Uh, Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move to have the RC accepted and adopted and put this substitute ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Vanderwill. Under discussion, this is something that we looked at um, about a year ago when Alderman Susha was, was chair of the committee. And it, there was communication. We we're looking at making that area safer. And it just took a while because in that area, it's just not sure what's county and what's city. So, so the, that's what we're doing tonight. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, this resolution is uh, proposed. This is out of my neighborhood on the south side, and the way it is right now, it's very, it's very hazardous for everybody, so I'm very happy to see that we're recommending that this being changed to 35 miles an hour. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Please call roll. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Matters laid over 11 of 1247. We'll hold for 1594. 1420 and 1421 and 22, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the, the RO and the ordinances be put upon their passage. That's 1420, 21, and 22? Yes, please. And the second two? Yes. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. and Susha. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1435 resolution number 1480607 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Clayunis, Susha, and Bourne authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Could be none. Please call the roll. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. And Vanderweel? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1458, General Ordinance Number 430607 by Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, and Manny reestablishing the salary position for the position of older person of the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, what we're doing here is establishing the uh, salary of the alderman in the year 2009. Um, it's common practice to vote on this when, or actually you have to vote on it when um, nobody that's currently on the council would be guaranteed a seat in 2009. We cannot set our own salary. So that's what we're doing. We're way ahead of the game by looking at the year 2009. So I would ask that you support this. Thank, Thank you. you. For the discussion, bring it down. Please call the roll. Boren? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? No. And Verhassel? Aye. Seven eyes, eight noes. Motion fails. 1458, General Ordinance Number 430, wait a minute. No. 1459, General Ordinance Number 44.0607 by Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, and Manny, so as to add, delete various positions from the Fire Department Table of Organization. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion is second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. 
Ryan. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Rehasselt. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1460 and 61. We'll take those two together, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I would move that 1460 and 61 be put upon their passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Am I going too fast for you? Sorry about <laughs> Just that. Just hold on. Okay, Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1574. I'm sorry. Yes, with the two, missing one. I'm sorry. Back up a bit. What is it? It's not on the agenda. I stand corrected. 13 to 2 would make it a better number. 13 eyes, two no's. 13 eyes, two no's, motion yeah. carries. Right. Thank you. Other matters authorized by law, 1574. We'll refer to law and licensing, 1575 and RO by the city clerk granting various licenses. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. Motion and second to accept and file under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1576, refer to public protection and safety. 1577, refer to finance. 1578, to be referred to public protection and safety. 1579, an RO by the library director stating that at the meeting of the Mead Public Library Board, they recommended accepting and filing a letter from Carter Paulus regarding his concerns with various issues about the library. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1580, an RO by the city clerk submitting an application for a private well permit for Allen and Mary Lee Kalk. Vice President Serla. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and file the RO. Motion and second. Any discussion? There is none. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1581 lies over until November 27th. 1582 will be referred to finance. 1583 also lies over to November 27th meeting. 1584 will be referred to Municipal Court Advisory Committee. 1585, an RO by the City Clerk submitting the final report of the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners Dog Study Subcommittee. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Motion and second to place on file. Under discussion, Alderman Meyer. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, we would like to hold this. Um, there have been some um, issues that have come up, and um, we didn't want this to go through tonight. Don't hold it. Refer it to somewhere. Um, I guess refer back to the um, Park and Forestry. There, there's a motion and second to refer back to Board of Parks and Forestry Commission. Under discussion. Okay, so I'm going to turn off all the lights because there was some blinking and start over. Under this, hold on, hold on. It's like a Christmas tree over here. You know, this dog issue, okay? It's been hashed and hashed and hashed by committees and subcommittees, and here we go again. Okay, I'm turning off the Christmas tree. Lights again. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in reading over this report, uh, I'm very impressed with the uh, work that was done by the committee. Uh, I guess I'm ready to move on with it, but I, if I'm not going to, if I'm not going to support it tonight, I guess I'd like to have some specific reasons from the from the older persons as to why we should not move on with it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Vanderwill, you're next, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'll support sending this back to the committee because I received quite a few phone calls last night about um, it was just kind of miscommunication with the citizens and the areas that we're going to have this dog run 
And I guess if uh, if I could, I'd ask the mayor to make it this this report available, if maybe at the library or on the internet, so that people can know the report and, and know exactly what we see. It's possible for the citizens to contact their older people, but I know Sunday night I was the only people, the person to get a bunch of phone calls. So that's why I think it's important to hold this so we can communicate with the citizens. Thank you. Uh, Susan, would you make a note of that? Thank you. You do have to. <laughs> a lady made, it, made a comment to me. She says, wherever you go, you're going to please 50 people and displease 50 more. So you're going to go back and forth. You're going to go back and do that. But that's OK. I mean, that's part of what a debate is. But this thing, this dog issue, not going to go away. And I mean, it's a great balancing act, so good luck. <laughs> Alderman Meyer. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I had received these phone calls. Um, Alderperson Montemayor received them. And um, what happened was when this committee was set up, it was understood that if there were any neighbors that lived in these areas that had concerns, then these parks or beach areas would be removed. And that did happen with um, Moose Park. And last night, we received many phone calls from people that are using a certain beach area that they walk their dogs on. And they made a point of saying that in this area, people are now, at this point, letting their dogs run off leash. And it is causing problems for them. Um, they are complaining of dogs growling, dogs jumping on them, and people not picking up after their dogs. So I believe we need to go back and look at this one beach area and take it off the table because we have a lot of disgruntled people. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I think you're right. 50 people will love it. 50 people will hate it. However, the criteria from the Board of Park and Forestry Commissioners and Public Works Committee in this wonderful report that we have tonight, number one says, Avoid interference with other established uses or department-sponsored activities. And then it goes on to, and from what we could tell by the telephone calls last evening, the rest of the criteria also, it, it, it butted up right against it. So I think we do have to refer it back to the Board of Park and Forestry Commissioners and then also Public Works again. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my concern in the report is enforcement. How do we, once we establish uh, a much more open uh, park policy, how do we in fact uh, maintain policy so that everybody's needs are well met? That I don't think is addressed. That I think is a key issue. The report itself suggests as much when it says that 40% of dog owners do not clean up after their pets. Interesting. Holderman, <laughs> claiming this. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I also agree with uh, Alderman Manny. I'm wondering, um, the police aren't going to have the time to do this, and uh, I think it's going to be some sort of committee of citizens or whatever group, um, and I think they would have to take on a big job in case you're coming up to somebody who's got a big mean dog um, that you're trying to enforce something. So I think it is. it does require some extra consideration as to how we'll keep this in order and how we're going to post it and how we're going to follow through on it. So I thank you very much. But the committee did a great job in what they did so far. Thank you, Alderman Myers. Yes. Can I ask Alderman Myers something? May I ask Alderman Myers something? Yes, Mr. Clerk. Um, Alderman Meyer, do you, there actually is a Board of Park and Forestry Commissioners Dog Study Committee, which is a separate committee. Is that where you wanted to go? Yes. And also Public Works? We're kind of connected, so. <laughs> and then my second question would be, do you want to also send 1593, which is the resolution doing the same thing, to the referral? OK. Thank that you. was a motion. Who second? Is that included in the second? Thank you. Thanks. Your Honor. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a comment as far as enforcement. I, I mentioned this to Alderman uh, Meyer before the meeting. Uh, this, if and when the council acts on the document, uh, the resolution that's on tonight's agenda uh, to implement these changes, it will require ordinance changes as well. Uh, ordinances currently say, you know, you can't have a dog in here, here, here. Uh, so that won't be self-executing. There will need to be some uh, ordinances that will change. And 
you know, that doesn't address the practical issue of enforcement, but it would provide the mechanism for uh, having the ordinance in place to enforce it. Thank you. Owner Redke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, when they were speaking of certain aldermen getting it, I got roasted royally before these hearings uh, from the neighbors in Moose Park, and the committee did uh, go along with their recommendations. And uh, that park is a half a block from my home, and I would love to see that park, but they said no. But the committee did do their job. The, uh, the citizens of this community did have the uh, availability for input at these public hearings. It's time to put this to bed. It's time to move on with this. Enough of this debating about it. Let's get this thing moving forward so we get the ordinance changes. We need to make this thing start happening so we can try this trial period. That's what we're looking at, a trial period. It's nothing permanent here. It's a trial period at this point in time. As far as enforcement, I find any dog droppings in the park. People leave dog droppings in the park. We're in front of my house and I got to go clean them up. It happens on a regular. I wish it wouldn't, but it happens. So, I mean, you're going to find it in other places, but I, I'd like to just say, let's put this to bed. Let's get it going. They've done their work. We're done. Thank you. Alderman I'm sorry, Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, now is the perfect time to fine tune this and send it back to committee. We're not in the huge dog walking season right now. And, you know, it's getting colder and it's going to start snowing. And I think we should just fine tune this before we start changing the ordinance and everything else. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderbilt. Okay, on the referral, back to uh, the subcommittee and the Par Board of Parks and Forestry Commission. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Oh, Roll call. And this would be for 1585 and 1593, which is the matching resolution? Yes. And I vote would be to refer. Groff? Aye. Hannah? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? No. Serta? Aye. And Davis? No. Ten ayes, four noes. Motion carries referred back. 1586 uh, will go to, will be referred to public protection and safety. 1587 will lie over until November 27th meeting. 1588 will also lie over till the 27th meeting. 1589 will be referred to finance. 1590 will go to finance also. 1591, a resolution by Alderman Berg authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the purchase of sale agreement by and between Sheboygan County and the city of Sheboygan. Vice President Serta, motion to Resolution passed. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Thank you. Motion and second. Thank you. Under discussion? Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I just would like to know um, who put this doc document together. That was put together by our city attorney. C can I ask a I, I need to ask a question on that because I'm as I read through it uh, on page six, Steve, I, I'm looking at under number two, um, where the county shall provide notice to the same to the city in writing and offer city the option to repurchase said parcel at the purchase price set forth in section one b four. When you go back and look at that, I, I'm just questioning that. That's on page three. Is that the correct area that we want to put that under lease property, or, or should it go back under the purchase price in terms of payment? I'm just wondering about that. Should it go under five rather than four? Yes. Okay. Good point. Okay. I, thank you. Um, may I ask one more question? Yes, if you please. please. Thank you. Um, and I also looked on, on page two under uh, bullet point number three, and I guess I just want this clear in my mind. Um, you've got survey of the property. City at its expense shall obtain a current survey of the police station parcel prepared by a registered surveyor. 
And then down, the very last sentence, it's the city shall have 10 days from the date of the receipt of the survey to approve same or to notify county of its objections to items disclosed therein. If city notifies county of objections to the survey and if county is unable or unwilling to correct same, city may terminate this agreement. Can you just, just make that clear? That's, we have time then if there's something wrong with that Yes. Property? Yes. In other okay. words, the survey would show, for instance, if there were easements on the property okay. uh, or encroachments that would impact the ability to build a police station on the site, something like that. You know, if the county back 100 years ago had granted a power company the right to put the power line right through the middle of that site, that, okay. that's the sort of thing that would show up on the survey. And if the, that could not be removed, that that would impact our ability to, uh, to build on there and we might not want to follow through. Wanna... The likelihood of that is pretty slim, but uh, that would give us that option. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't know if we're putting the cart before the horse here. We have coming up here also uh, Resolution by um, Alderman Vanderweel to enter into contract for a site investigation, 15-92. Uh, um, I'm, I'm looking at this. Are, we're going to purchase the property on this document on 1591, and then we're going to do an environmental investigation on the property on 1592. Um, before people start throwing rocks at me here for delaying the process, I might have to duck. Um, it seems to me that the cart is before the horse. We have a, in this purchase agreement, we have that the property is being purchased as is uh, in uh, page six, number four. In other words, uh, when the property is purchased, the date of the purchase, what you see is what you get, is basically the way this reads. And uh, we have here, we're going to authorize to, per, to, we're going to authorize if this passes a site investigation based upon the fa phase one and phase two environmental assessments that were done in order to figure out what type of contamination is on the property. I'm just wondering at this point, is it wise to purchase the property in this document as is, and then do a site investigation to find out what we're dealing with in this document. That's my question to the council at this point. I'll uh, ask Attorney McLean to respond to that. Attorney McLean. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Alderman Ryan, if you look at the item Roman numeral 2A on page 3, conditions preceding to sales, right of inspection, that provides that each party so have the right to inspect the other's parcel, take soil borings, groundwater samples, and so forth. Uh, we've got 60 days in which to do that from the time we enter into the agreement. Uh, that 60 days, originally the first draft that I had prepared had a 30-day time frame. When, uh, when we uh, talked about following up and doing the, the follow-up site investigation uh, with the Northern Environmental uh, to complete the investigation of the site. Their report indicates at the outside it would be seven weeks. So that's within the 60 days. So we changed the 30 days to 60 days so that once we enter into the, into the agreement, we've got, and we enter the agreement to do the site investigation, there'll be uh, ample opportunity within the 60 days to have the site investigation work completed. Reverend Ryan, follow-up question? Thank you, Your Honor. Same, same question. So what we're saying is that with the 60-day window, we can go ahead and authorize uh, in 1592 to purchase the property, and that we can also authorize, or in 1591, excuse me, to purchase the property, and in 1592 we can do the site investigation. Now, does this then authorize that if we find the big can of worms under the ground in the site investigation, uh, this contract reads such that we have the right to not purchase that property within that 60-day time frame. Is, is that what we're saying? 
Yes. Uh, it, go on that paragraph 2A follows through the next sentence. In the event that a party determines that as a result of its inspection it does not wish to close, that party must, within the 60 days of the date of the agreement, provide the other party with written notice of, intention, of its intention not to close. So that would... That would take us off the hook. Yes. In that case. Yes. And I will support this. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We have uh, 1591. Motion has been made to put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1592, a resolution by Alderman Vanderweel authorizing the purchase. Oh, I'm sorry. 1592 will be referred to public protection and safety. 1593, a resolution by Alderman Meyer adopting the recommendations outlined in the Board of Par Parks and Forestry Commissioner's Dog Study Committee's final recommendation making the city's park system pet friendly. Alderman Meyer. We've already acted on that. That's we Can we take together. that too? Yep. Alderman Meyer took this one and the RO together to refer on. Uh, you want to speak? Could, Please do. Uh, if we could go back to 1592, uh, uh, I guess I would suggest, since we have approved 1591, that rather than delay the inspection uh, authorizing into that contract, that you may wish to suspend the rules on that and act on that tonight. On 1592? Yes, that's what I'd suggest. That's, is there anyone that would like to move to suspend the rules? Motion and second to suspend. Is there any objection to that? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Graff, motion. I was going to, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, I would just ask and I don't, I don't have this document right in front of me right now, but I, I know that the money was coming out of the police department fund. Was that, is that part of the plan? I mean, do, was that money put aside for these things specifically? I'm not quite sure. I'd have to ask uh, Mr. Gephardt on that. We can get you an answer for that, though. All right. Alderman Susan, would you please note that, Susan? Alderman Kittleson? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I just have to clear up another thing here. If we're going to suspend the rules on 1592, you're, you're saying this is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for a site investigation. I guess what I want, it, it, that's the same as a survey, what we're asking here? What, what is? This is the, uh, Pardon, clean. Oh, this is the uh, environmental investigation that's referenced in that. In, uh, in which? In the contract? In the contract uh, where we have the right to do soil borings and, and uh, inspect oh. the property for, the, for okay. environmental purposes. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1594, and I believe we said we would take care of 1247, uh, an RC by finance recommending establishing the equivalent runoff unit rate for the city's stormwater management system, user fee, and passing the substitute resolution. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to make a motion to amend the substitute resolution number 80-0607 by changing the second, be it therefore, to read at $1 instead of $1.50 and that the next two, be it therefore, resolved, be stricken from the resolution and that the last, be it further resolved, reflect January 1st, 2009 for calendar year 2009, effectively eliminating the stormwater fee in two years. Alderman Meyer, can I have your notes, please? <laughs> Afterwards, can you need them now? 
You could just pass them forward if you want. I supported this uh, going for five years. Um, I've reconsidered and I will support the two year. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would hate to be known as the person that voted to keep an unpopular fee tax, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the city right now, if we are uh, this year um, saying that in order to reach our uh, zero increase uh, budget that we're, we're cutting back, we're, we're really uh, uh, hurting to do it, and that next year, uh, as the mayor has said, we're going to have a hard time doing that, and we're going to have to basically increase the tax levy. Um, this is an unpopular fee. There are people that ran for office saying they're going to get rid of this fee. Uh, but it does raise a million and a half dollars for the city every year, with 80% of that or 70% plus of it funded by business as opposed to the, the individual homeowner. Uh, it's $36 a year for the homeowners, um, myself, uh, I know my company, we get billed close to $2,000 a year for our stormwater fee. I don't like to pay it. I don't think anybody likes to pay fees, taxes, but if we're in a bad financial situation, if you're in a bad financial situation, I don't think that you look for ways to get rid of your revenue. Um, it's usually not a smart thing to do. You get rid of your revenue and then you turn around and say, well, we don't have the revenue, so let's just get rid of part of the company, or let's just get rid of some of the people that are running the company, working for the company. So at this point, I'm not going to support this. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I know it might not be popular, might not gain me any votes in the future, but I'm not going to vote to uh, rescind the stormwater fee at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, in my opinion, the funding of infrastructure in Sheboygan is equally as important as, pub as funding public protection. Unfortunately, the previous administration didn't agree with my opinion, and the public works management was forced to come up with a creative way to supplement their budget, hence the implementation of the stormwater fee. Um, there are, unfortunately, though, there are some guidelines. There were documents that the city filed with the DNR. There are recommendations that the DNR gave to the city in regards to managing the stormwater. <coughs> and when you analyze what was being done, we were not utilizing the $1.5 million to actually uh, deal with the storm water problems that were outlined by the DNR. So I have trouble supporting the continuation of this if, if we're not going to do what the DNR is pretty much recommending. It doesn't make much sense. I think that the city of Sheboygan is being taken for a ride by the water utility because the water utility is charging us $77,000 a year to put that line item on our bill. Uh, the residents in this city are only billed quarterly. So four times a year, they're required to put one little sentence on a water bill that they're already sending out, and they're charging the city $77,000 for that. Um, I think that was, that was um, not a good deal in the best interest of the city. Um, but in regards to how we're going to fund uh, the stormwater management and the public works department in the future, um, this council has already taken the first steps. The Capital Improvements Committee changed the request from Mr. Holton for the 2007 budget. He requested an additional $250,000, um, and the Capital Improvements Committee increased that already uh, to bring it up to $750,000. That money will be used to take care of the flooding problem on the intersection of 5th and New York. So we have already taken care of one-third of the stormwater fee for next year. This council has already approved that. So that's been taken care of. Um, as the mayor mentioned earlier, we're in the process of restructuring the table of organization. Hopefully that will save the city hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and some of that money could be used for the public works department. In the year 2008, uh, the, the tax incremental district over by the new Walmart is going to be expiring. And for the first time ever, the Holiday Inn Express, Perkins, Wendy's, WGNR, the new Walmart and everything else in that area is going to be coming onto the tax rolls. And you know, the city's going to benefit as well as the county and, and the schools with, with that uh, tax incremental district expiring. We're so good at creating them, um, but in the next couple of years, we're going to start feeling the fruits of, of uh, the, the elimination of them. When they expire, all of that 
property is coming on the tax rolls, and that's going to be a huge surge into the city's general fund. And I would recommend that a good portion of that money in 2008 also be put towards public works to help uh, take care of the stormwater uh, problem. Uh, one of the big concerns as I was looking into this uh, situation is I'm very concerned with the E. coli levels. I met with several people over in public works and what I found is that you can link, uh, when there's a rainstorm and you check the storm water, you can link the runoff where the flock of seagulls are located. Sometimes the number goes up over 5,000 at those uh, mm -hmm. collection or those outlets. And to close the beaches in Sheboygan to the red zone, um, you only need, need a count of 1,000. So the gulls are definitely contributing to the problem that we have and um, chasing them from one point to the other isn't necessarily the answer. It's going to come down to talking about oiling the eggs and getting DNR permission to do that to control the size. But that is something that needs to be addressed in the future. Um, overall, I think this is a nice compromise that Alderperson Meyer is proposing. The original document called for uh, uh, ERU of $1.50 in 2007 and eliminated in 2008. The Finance Committee um, made a recommendation of going down to $2.07, $1.50 at 08, $1.09, 50 cents in 2010, eliminated in 11. And now the current proposal meets uh, right in between the two. We'd be going down to $2.07, $1.08, and it would be gone in 09. So I want to thank Alderperson Meyer for making that change. Alderman Grubb. Thank you, Your Honor. That's, I want a clarification of the motion because I, I thought she had said that it stays at, um, at $2 in, in 07 and then goes down to $1 in, in 08. But is it one fifty and then $1 or? Do you want me to read it? Please. Uh, to amend the substitute resolution by changing the second, be it further, be it therefore, to read quote, at $1 instead of 150 And then in the next, be it further resolved, be stricken from the, in the next two further, be it resolved, be stricken from the resolution. And that the last, be it further resolved, reflect January 2009 for calendar year 2009, effectively eliminating the stormwater fee in two years. Does that make sense? Thank you. Um, yes, <laughs> that, that does. Um, thank you. Um, in, um, in finance, uh, I supported the, um, the five-year phase-out or the four-year phase-out, whatever you want to consider this. Um, but after receiving um, quite a few calls on this particular issue over um, the past weekend, um, I, um, I will be supporting uh, the amendment to go to the $1 in, in 2008, leaving it at $2 in 2007, and then phasing it out completely after the two years. Next we have Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I also supported the uh, five-year phase-out in finance, and I'm going to support the uh, two-year phase-out, but uh, I guess before the taxpayers in Sheboygan uh, start popping any champagne corks, uh, the cost for these projects is not going to go away. It's going to come out of the general fund, uh, which is the property tax, or for the larger projects, they're probably going to have to be bonded for. And so that means that the majority of these costs are still going to be borne by the residential property taxpayers mm -hmm. and also the business taxpayers. So I'm glad to see this go away, but the cost of these projects is not going to go away. They're just going to be coming from the usual sources again, the property taxpayers and the business taxpayers. Uh, this was a very hard decision for me to make in the first place, even to do away with this fee, because, uh, although I do hate taxes and I do hate fees. Unfortunately, I do not have a lot of sympathy for some of the large nonprofits in this town, which I won't mention any names, but they know who they are, who are getting a free ride, are going to get a free ride again when this phase is out, and also are not paying anything for fire protection, police protection, or any other public work services that they're receiving. So I'm going to go along with this uh, because that's what my constituents want me to do, but I do have some reservations about eliminating it. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Next we have Alderman Cleunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I also um, hesitate to uh, take it away because I think uh, we still have responsibilities. By taking them away, the fees away, we still have um, water mains that are undersized. We have water mains that are 
damaged and need to be uh, re redone, and that kind of thing is going on constantly. This is an older city, and we can't just uh, think, well, because we're not paying this fee that somehow it's not going to come back and bite us. So um, I also, I, I think I'm going to not support the amendment as it is. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I haven't met one person yet that likes fees or taxes. No one likes to pay them. You just kind of accept it. I would love the, the vote to get rid of this. As a factory worker, $36 means a lot to me. But it's easy to get rid of a fee. The hard part is making a plan to replace that fee. What I need to know before I would get rid of this is in seven years, 10 years down the road, am I going to be paying more than $36 a year in my taxes to make up for all these projects? We have a, an old sewer system and things that we have to maintain, like Alderman Bourne and Alderman Clahuna says, stated today, and before I would vote to, to get rid of this fee, I would need to see a plan on how we're going to look at it in the next seven to 10 years. Thank you. We do have a capital improvement plan for five years that we put together to address a lot of these issues that... Uh, sure. Oh. My, and, and I realize that, that, that we borrow and as it goes on, we'll take care of these projects, but we're going to have to pay back the money and without this fee, it's going to have to come out of the taxes of the general person. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. There were some statements made in public forum and on the floor that um, has raised four questions for me that I would like to address to either Mr. Holton or Mr. Beeble, if, if I so may. Um, Mr. Holton. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Holton. Um, if you could address, um, number one, the underutilized, I guess we're left with an impression through public forum that we're underutilizing these dollars and um, there could be a potential of inappropriate use of these dollars. That's not true. The, all that money is being used for the going towards the stormwater system. Uh, like it's, some of it goes to administration. It goes to uh, about six employee equivalents uh, for the maintenance and repair of the system. Uh, the overtime that was talked about, yes, that was higher than expected, but the regular salaries was lowered by that amount also. So comparing the two together, uh, uh, between what was appropriated and what was spent, was within $1,000. Okay, thank you. Second question is the state re report, which was submitted from your office, it was quoted that um, you recognize that we have no flooding problems. Is this true? No, that's not true. Okay. Um, thirdly, what, how, how will this affect then um, the maintenance of our roads if we take this stormwater fee away? Well, I guess the efficiencies of your office as well. I guess I'm not going to understand the question. As far as the capital improvement side, it will be competing with the street repairs, the resurfacing and the paving. Which I guess coincides with my last question. Do you then... Um, would you recommend or do you think it's sufficient enough the $250,000 that was earmarked for 2007 to meet those costs and our future costs? Do you think it can be handled appropriately just by earmarking that amount out of capital improvements? Of, of the $1.5 million up was raised, <clears throat> roughly $1, one million goes to the operations, maintenance, repair. Five hundred dollars was going towards the capital improvements projects and we were banking that money because our first project is, is a Fifth New York, which is about $1.25 million. So we have, uh, with next year now, even it came, it's coming out of the general borrowing, we finally had that money uh, in place for next year to do that project. Uh, I don't quite understand what you're saying about the $250,000. I, I guess I, if you could just share with the public, do you foresee costs exceeding the $250,000 out of capital improvement? Let's say if we did, we earmarked that every year, do you see the cost for... You know. We have roughly fifteen and a half million dollars of projects that uh, we'd like to see impl implemented. And it's going to take years to do that. Uh, I think we're out to 2017, I believe, uh, and that probably wasn't even. That's probably very aggressive, even with the stormwater utility. So it uh, that could delay some of the projects. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holton. Alderman Recky. Thank you, Your Honor. 
and I know this was a pledge of some people, including myself, but I've had numerous homeowners, numerous businesses contact me in my time on this council asking why this tax was ever put into place, and it is a tax. There's no two ways about it. Taxes seem to come up overnight. The original proposal was to get rid of it in five years. Me, myself, I'd like to get rid of it right now, but I can support two years. There are some administration fees with this. To this minute, I cannot see why the Sheboygan Water Utility charges this council or this city one nickel to do something for this council. We have to go and turn around and do so much for them as a council to make sure that they continue to run efficiently. I don't think that is right, and I want to take a look at that, but I think we need to put this to bed. Two years from now, it's fine. It's an unpopular program. It's an unpopular tax, and it's just going to show us we need to start living within our means, which hadn't happened for so many years before I got here. Enough is enough. Let's put it to bed right now. I call the question. Thank you. Motion and second to call the question. We will vote. Of course, three-quarters <clears throat> vote. Two-thirds. Two-thirds. Who seconded it? I did. Call the roll. Boren. Could you clarify what we're, we're cutting off discussion. So this is an I vote would be to call the question to stop discussion. Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Raff? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. 14 eyes, 1 no. Motion carries. We will call the question on the amendment. Please call the roll. And just to clarify, the amendment effectively eliminates the stormwater fee in two years. Clayunis? No. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? No. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion carries. Fifteen, Alderman Susha, on votes been taken. Is there something you need to say? I wanted to speak to the document, not the amendment. Before the vote. Pardon me? I just wanted to, we were voting on the amendment. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. I, I to right. The, the amendment carries. Now we need a motion to. Approve as amended. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to clarify a question that Alderperson Serta had asked uh, Mr. Holton. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, I know we have a lot of papers on our desk. I did give a handout, and I wasn't going to get into um, get into it in depth. It's pretty obvious. I put some arrows there. If you have any questions, you can uh, talk to me about it afterwards. But I did go over uh, quite extensively the DNR reports. You know, we've got a couple of these larger reports uh, that I picked up from Public Works. And on the last page of the five-page document that I handed out to you, it's from the Sheboygan Stormwater Management Plan. At the bottom, it talks about the findings. Point number two under findings. Flooding is not a serious problem in the city. That is where I believe the Taxpayers Alliance is getting that statement from. Um, I think we all will agree that we have isolated flooding situations within the city that need to be desperately addressed. You know, we went through the Bluff Avenue, we've got Fifth in New York. These situations are going to be taken care of, but Sheboygan is not in New Orleans. We are not sitting in the bottom of a teacup. If a big wave came, I don't think we'd all be underwater. So I just wanted to uh, point that out, and if you have any questions about this document, Please feel free to ask me about it after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. We'll call the roll on the, on the motion as amended. Manny? Pardon me? This vote would be the substitute resolution as amended to be passed. No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Racky? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? No. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion carries. 1595 will go to public protection and safety. 1596 go to public works. 1597, Special Committee on Risk Management. 1598, Special Committee on Risk Management. 1599, Finance. 
15,100 public works, 15,101 public works, 15,102 public protection and safety, 15,103 public protection and safety. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 15104 is an RO by the city clerk submitting the Sheboygan Area School District 2006 tax levy to be used in 2007. That lies over. 15105 is submitting the Lakeshore Technical College District 2006 2007 tax levy report. That lies over. 15106 is submitting a communication from Melanie Koch requesting that the dog run south of Blue Harbor be restored between October and April since very few people from Blue Harbor are on the beach to distress at that time. Goes to Public Works. 15107, submitting a communication from Dwayne Knudsen, Vice President of Human Resources of the Volrath Company, requesting that the on-street parking in front of the company located at 1236 North 8th Street be evaluated to determine the parking controls would help to alleviate the congestion in the area. Goes to public protection and safety. 15108, submitting a communication from Jerry Festel, 2924 Wiedemeyer Avenue, requesting no parking signs be erected at the corners of Wiedemeyer Avenue and at the corners of Wilson Avenue due to safety issues. Refer to public protection and safety. Is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, Mayor, Please. before we adjourn, there's a document they did not act on. Okay, what is that? Um, there's a document you did not act on. It was the parent one, the one that went along with the stormwater. We that's need right. to make a motion to file that one. It's 12 47. That's the. There's motion to file. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. aye. Stand adjourned.